Dan, thanks for joining me. Appreciate your time. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and your team on this uh, exciting search for Stevenson. Uh, and thanks for joining me today. Uh, would love to just uh, maybe start by uh, learning a bit about you, your background, and uh, what drew you uh, to Stevenson and ultimately to the role as president of this great institution. So yeah, as you'll quickly tell from my accent, I didn't grow up in the States. Um, I started uh, uh, in the UK, all my schooling was there, I went to college there. Um, I started off in academia. Um, I was a postdoctoral researcher, lecturer um, in animal behavior, uh, behavioral neuroscience, uh, before transitioning to school teaching about 23 years ago now. Um, I taught in uh, Dublin, in Ireland, in a small boarding school in the Wicklow Hills. Uh, taught at a, a, a big independent day school, a uh, day boarding school outside London, Seven Oaks School, for a couple of years, and then moved to the States in 2007. Uh, I spent 10, 10 years at Catlin Gable School in Portland, in Oregon, as the science department chair, and then as the dean of students, and then five years as the division head there. Uh, I left there in 2017 to come to Stevenson to, to be the head of the Pebble Beach campus, which is the upper division here. Um, and last December, um, I transitioned into the role as president of Stevenson. That's great. And, you know, uh, very interesting uh, career arc. And you mentioned several boarding schools along the way. And, of course, Catlin Gable is a day school. Um, but so talk about just the boarding culture and what's drawn you to that. And for those who've never worked in a boarding school but might be intrigued uh, what it's like uh, to, to work at a boarding school. Uh, so I went to a boarding school um, uh, as, a, as a student and uh, Callan Gable was the only non-boarding school that I worked in. It's a model that I, I strongly believe in. Um, it's just, it, it, was, it was a great experience for me. Um, and uh, if you are sort of all in on, on education as a vocation, so the coaching, the living in the dorms, the being around uh, students uh, all the time, being able to be more impactful in their overall experience and not just those brief snippets in the classroom, I benefited from it hugely as a as an adolescent, and I've seen the impact that it can have have on kids uh, to have that that adult mentoring and that that regular presence around them. Um, I think it's just a, an immersive model of education um, that I personally really have enjoyed. I think it's hard work. I think God bless boarding school teachers for for living with adolescents twenty four seven. Um, but it's also incredibly rewarding. Um, so as I said, it's a model that I believe in. One of the great things about Stevenson is it enabled me to have the best of both worlds. So Cal and Gable was the first pre-K-12 school I worked in, which gives you this incredible 14-year arc with families and kids. Um, and you get to learn so much from lower division, middle division teachers. I taught in the upper division about child development, about curriculum alignment, about where the kids are coming from. So to have that, in a pre-K through 12 is wonderful, but very few pre-K through 12s have boarding school upper division. So at Stevenson, you get both. You get the pre-K through 12 and you get the, the boarding uh, boarding component in the upper division. And so it sort of blended. There's very, very few schools in the world uh, that blend those two things that I believe in very strongly about pre-K through 12 education and, and boarding. And you get the sunset behind you uh, in your screensaver or your backdrop there, which is uh, second to none in the world and, and the beautiful campus that I've been to several times at Stevenson. But for those who haven't, just talk a little bit more about what makes Stevenson a bit uh, unique. Uh, you've already kind of described that day boarding to campus element, but just go going beyond those specifics. Uh, if someone were to just kind of walk the grounds of Stevenson other than wanting to go play at the golf course nearby what else would uh, uh, would, would be popping out as they, as they did a tour I think just the physical beauty of the area that we live in um, the air quality we're right by the ocean where uh, the students many of them their favorite thing to do is to walk down to the beach it's a 10 minute walk from campus across the golf course down to the ocean that you can see on the screen save behind you on the Carmel campus, uh, you literally drive onto campus and then there's a view of Point Lobos and the ocean. Carmel Beach is right behind you as you enter campus. So that sets, uh, that environment sets the tone on the campus. There's that air of, uh, of, of health and tranquility and beauty. Um, and I think when you combine it with how the campus feels personally, the reason why I came to Stevenson, why I came from Catlin Gable and came to Stevenson was 
was how it felt when I walked onto the canvas. And that wasn't just the physical beauty. It was how you were received by the people. Um, the kids here look you in the eye. They say hello. They they smile at adults. They're they're very very um, uh, poised and kind and in a kind of that, that feeling of stress that you often get on many high school campuses. It, it's just much reduced um, here. The faculty are, are a great bunch here. They they really are. Um, they get on well with, with each other. They support each other. Many old, long-standing traditional boarding schools quite often have hierarchy within their faculty. Um, there's those that have been there a long time who kind of control things, and then you're lucky if if you if you're sort of invited into that conversation. That does not exist here. Um, it really is. Um, it's a really equal environment where where new folks can have an impact and they're welcomed in for their ideas and. There's always a spot for them at the lunch table. There's always people looking to sort of help people settle into um, into life at Stevenson. And it's the same on both campuses. Um, I, I observed it when I visited as a candidate, and it's it's been true in, in the six and a half years I've been at the school. Well, in terms of new people settling in and making an impact, uh, we're here to help you all uh, uh, in your, in your uh, exciting quest for... Uh, a new marketing communications uh, strategic leader and director. Uh, talk about, you know, you, you just described some outstanding kind of messaging or, or in a way marketing of the school, but talk about what uh, is on, on tap or on the plate for this person when they, when they come on board. What are some important things that are, that are happening for Stevenson that this person will be uh, uh, jumping right into the fire on? I think the, the biggest thing and the overarching theme is that we're looking for someone to help us align what it feels like to come to Stevenson as a student and, and by extension as an employee, because this is predominantly going to be working on marketing materials for admissions, but also through advancement and through um, recruitment and retention of faculty. Helping someone who can capture the feeling of being at Stevenson, which is pretty unique um, and is a real positive. How do we capture that in our materials? How do we describe it to folks? who have like one snapshot when they visit campus, but how do we reinforce that feeling in all the ways we talk about education, the way we talk about community, the way we talk about connection and belonging? And, and how do we how do we make our written and video assets reflect accurately what it's truly like to be here? Because it is a special place to be. And it has felt like in the recent years, there has been a disconnect between the language we use and then the actual experience of being here. Um, and that doesn't do us any favors in any of these areas. So we're really looking for someone to help us hone that message so it all feels seamless and aligned. Um, we are, we've done a ton of the foundational work, work to help this person uh, land well in that we are in the final stages of working on a new website with Interactive Schools. Um, they're visiting next week to do the photo shoots and the website is due to launch in January. Um, We've done a lot of work with um, Libretto and KLA, who are leading um, marketing communications folks around uh, advancement. We have a, a capital campaign going. We're in the quiet phase, but we need someone to help us go from that quiet phase to the, the public phase and how we're going to get the message out about our campaign and then why it's important to get involved. So there's big opportunities coming, but not starting from scratch. The foundation is there. What we're really looking for, uh, for is someone who can come and help us hone and refine and deliver that message effectively and efficiently. And that person is going to join an outstanding leadership team. You have some folks who've been there a long time, uh, some folks who are new. Uh, we've spoken to to many of them, and uh, I think they, they bring a lot of excitement and, and, and just experience to the table. Uh, just talk about sort of, you know, your team in general and, and the partners this person will have. Uh, and also just any uh, sort of uh, ideal qualities or, or uh, things that you're looking for that will make a great partnership uh, you know, between the president and this, this director here. Yeah, so the director will, will be a direct report to, to me as the president. And I say this is my seventh year at the school, my first in, in well, one and a half in, in, in this role. But I, I've been at the school for a while and, and I think I know the school pretty well and, and, and the messaging we're looking to send. The key partners are going to be in uh, our directors of advancement and admission, Amy Graham, Amy Elmore. Um, they have a wealth of experience from a number of independent schools, both on the east and west coast. So that's joining people with 20 plus years of experience in their roles 
in independent schools. I'd been working in independent schools around the, the world for 20 plus years. Um, our division heads, um, we have two very experienced um, division heads, one who's new to the role, but has been at Stevenson 18 years. Um, our middle division head has been at the school for um, 15 years. We have a new lower division head who's come from a public uh, charter school in New York who's bringing a great deal of energy, ideas, and insights into um, ch- uh, early childhood education, who's been a huge addition to the team. Um, and we also have built out a structure in terms of data support and infrastructure around communications using Slate. Um, we've hired many people from their mothership company. Um, uh, many of their leaders now work at Stevenson. Um, and so we have a really well-established team who, who do the back-end support work um, for, for communication. So it's a it's a really strong team. Um, the communications team itself is very small right now. We have the opportunity to build it out. And we've been waiting specifically to make this key hire first so that you kind of get to pick your team um, or you get to, to help us figure out what we really need to round out the team. Um, and so that's another great opportunity for, for whoever um, steps into this role. Exciting, exciting. Uh, final question on sort of just, you know, a little feel good personal note here. But uh, my sense is that uh, I, I think Stevenson is one of the largest boarding schools in the western half of the U.S. The U.S. is not the largest. You're in this unique geographical area. You're, you're, in, you're near the SF Bay Area in California where a lot of exciting things are happening, but you're not in the, the rat race or sort of the, the craziness of the Bay Area. You have that serene, tranquil uh, uh, sort of just you know, surroundings uh, behind you and certainly there. Uh, if Dan had the, the the boarding school student had had been there had gone to Stevenson what would have been like one or two just you know things you would have just been falling in love with or just absolutely you know just you know been been totally get involved in just just tell folks who have never been to Stevenson one or two things that students just are, are really so um, just loving about the school or things that you've heard over the years that just you know make <clears throat> Stevenson such a great place uh, I think living in this area it's the outdoor life um it's literally between 55 and 70 degrees year round um and folks are in the uh, students uh they get into the beach to surf um we have p uh, our pe or our athletics options include stand up paddle boarding kayaking surfing these like curricular offerings at the school uh we have outdoor trips that you go hiking in big sur um you can go climbing in yosemite uh, we have Pinnacles National Park just around the corner. Our middle division, all four grades of our middle division, uh, five, six, seven, and eight, are out on a science trip this week where they're um, Andrew Malera State Park for two nights. My daughter, who's in fifth grade, is now camping for the first time. She's doing it in Big Sur. Um, that's pretty cool <laughs> to have that. I, I, I have a son also who's in ninth grade. My daughter's in fifth grade. Having to remind them that this is not normal life. This is such an idyllic existence that... This is such a privilege to grow up at Stevenson School and in this particular part of the world. Um, is it, it really is. Kids can still be kids here. Uh, you can drop them at the beach. They can hang out there. Um, Carmel is incredibly safe. Like You see groups of teenagers wandering around quite happily in coffee shops or in the streets, and it's just a, a kind of uh, chocolate box little town with, that's really safe. Um, and so... It, family wise it's a, it's a great place to, to raise a family um if you're uh if you're younger we're, we're literally two hours from san francisco um if you said if you leave at the right we could be four hours if you leave at the wrong time but we're two hours if you leave at the right time and we can share the secrets of the traffic patterns for anyone who, who, who joins us um monterey airport i've discovered as a huge gift um i even fly back to the uk from from monterey through phoenix there's more and more direct connections out of the airport, which is a tiny airport, 10 minutes from school. Um, and you can get to Phoenix, Seattle, uh, Dallas, Denver, um, Las Vegas, a number of uh, LA um, direct from Monterey. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's really connecting. It's, you check in 30 minutes before the flight goes. You literally just walk in and go, it's more like a train station than an airport. So there really are. It, it's it is small town living. You know, the, the Monterey is thirty thousand people. Carmel is three thousand people. Um, it's it's not it's not a big area, but for the size of the of the place, there are lots of options in terms of restaurants and things to do. And 
um, entertainment. Uh, it punches above its weight outside, but it is, it is a small town. And uh, clearly, and, and I, I know firsthand, a wonderful town. And I, as you're describing the, the, the beach, I was thinking you, you must have the one of the few schools where when you hear 10 students went to the beach, you're like, oh, great. That, how wonderful. <laughs> They're at the beach because <laughs> uh, it's right next door. So I uh, well, appreciate it, Dan. Thanks so much for your time. This has been great talking to you. And uh, we look forward to working with you uh, throughout the search. Fantastic. And thanks for your help with this. And uh, we look forward to, to meeting some of the candidates. You bet. Thanks. Okay.